you, uh, Charlie, and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to um, <coughs> Manitoba, as we say, we're at Manitoba, Canada's heartbeats. Um, just a few things we'll talk about this morning on um, um, Manitoba. Um, basically, where is Manitoba? <coughs> I assume that many people will have heard of it, but not necessarily know exactly where it is in this vast, vast area of North America. Uh, you can see it in the in the red uh, section in the map there, uh, and as it says, uh, bordered by Sasakan and uh, Ontario, North Dakota, and Minnesota, right in the middle between Toronto and Vancouver, as far as access is concerned. Uh, um, a lot of uh, flights uh, in and out of um, Manitoba, which really is your uh, European uh, area of, of uh, Western Canada. It's a, it's a great, great city, is Manitoba, uh, uh, Winnipeg being the capital, of course. So, <clears throat> just some of the information here on Manitoba. It is a vast area of. Uh, uh, 250, nearly 251,000 square miles, uh, a population of only 1.3 million for that vast area, and it's made of, as it says on the screen there, <coughs> really vast and flat rolling prairies in the south and the west uh, is where the, um, the population um, is, and also the remainder is really um, rocks, lakes, mountain ranges, uh, there's over 100,000 lakes in Manitoba, so it is a, a very, very um, <coughs> vast and beautiful area. Some of the experiences in Manitoba we'll t uh, talk about today, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, ca kayaking with the belugas, the, the white whales at the, in the summertime, and of course then the, uh, the polar bears. Polar bears are around uh, virtually all of the year, but uh, the greatest experiences in the, out on the tundra when there's snow and a uh, very, very um, beautiful area. We'll talk about uh, Winnipeg on the bottom left-hand corner there, a wonderful, wonderful European-style city in uh, Canada, in Western Canada, in um, Winnipeg, Manitoba, and some of the activities of uh, fishing, etc., and other experiences that people like to... Uh, uh, <clears throat> see and do. As I said, Winnipeg itself is, is absolutely wonderful. It's got so much to, to see and to do and uh, to offer for the traveller. It also connects um, <clears throat> with um, uh, Toronto and uh, Canada by the uh, the train, the Canadian train of Via Rail. I'm sorry, I think I said Montreal, but Vancouver and Toronto, I should have said there. Um, uh, Winnipeg is, is the central point there as well. It stops over there. Uh, some amazing architecture in this uh, beautiful, beautiful city. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the Canadian uh, Museum for Human Rights, we'll talk about that a little later on. Uh, one of its uh, only kind in the world. It's, a, it's quite an amazing uh, structure and the content inside. We'll also talk about the um, Hermetic Code, I guess Canada's uh, answer to the Da Vinci Code or um, <coughs> similar. Some amazing uh, areas to visit and see, such as the Manitoba Museum right in the in the centre of uh, Winnipeg. Um, <coughs> traces history right throughout uh, uh, the First Nations people right through to, to modern day. Absolutely a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, and also, <coughs> as per typical Canadian um, experiences, fishing uh, is, is quite an amazing and uh, wonderful, wonderful experience. So it can be done either fly-in um, by, uh, by uh, any type of water vessel, canoe or uh, boat of any description. Uh, and it's just a, um, a great um, leisure time for both visitors and, and local Canadians. Um, <clears throat> we've also got the uh, um, Bison, etc. at at uh, Fort White. Um, uh, it's like a, a big conservatory. It's a big sanctuary, and uh, you can get up close uh, to the to the uh, the Bison and and other animals in that area. Uh, some wonderful, wonderful experiences you can see. Um, <clears throat> It's very much an Arctic type entrance experience um, uh, in, of the, the 
early Viking settlement as well, which is which is uh, I think uh, in um, p- parts of uh, um, 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 Manitoba in Kimley, for example, has the largest Viking population outside of uh, um, <clears throat> uh, the the, uh, the the Arctic regions it, uh, itself. So. Uh, the journey to uh, Churchill is quite an amazing uh, experience. It's a it's a huge uh, zoo type uh, exhibit in in uh, Winnipeg, and it's a great, wonderful experience to go there and just see polar bears in the uh, in their real um, normal uh, habitat uh, when they're swimming in huge big water bridge tanks, etc., and then out in the in the uh, in the snow fields, uh, like a, a normal tundra would be up in uh, in uh, <coughs> Churchill. Speaking of Churchill, Pert Churchill is right up north, as you can see uh, on the map there. <coughs> Excuse me. Population of only 923 people. However, it is a vast uh, um, explosion of of tourists in in the in the season, summer season, and also the uh, in the uh, <coughs> Uh, up towards the uh, the winter um, uh, as well. Um, it's 1,000 kilometres or 800 miles north of Winnipeg, so it's uh, an air flight or the Canadian uh, <coughs> train network of uh, Via Rail. Uh, the Churchill train is uh, is now back in service after having some um, being knocked out uh, because of the severe storms were there 18 months or so ago, but it's now up and running again. And uh, so it's an ideal way for tourists to fly one way and back the other way by train or, or vice versa. It is where to experience um, polar bears and beluga whales at their very, very best in, um, in in anywhere towards the Arctic regions. You can see a shot of um, Churchill. It's a, a little town. Uh, has a lot of uh, hotels, motels, B&Bs, a lot of restaurants and bars and what have you and it services the area out onto uh, the tundra. Let's go through a little bit of um, Churchill and the seasons. The summer months, July through August, it's it's very brief because the weather conditions do change uh, quite rapidly. <coughs> there are, as it says, there are thousands of beluga whales migrate into the rivers and estuaries uh, up in Churchill as they come in, and it's a great... Uh, opportunity to uh, kayak with the whales. No longer we've got swimming in there, and I just leave that there because it's important for people to understand now that uh, the authorities do not allow uh, people to come and snorkel or swim with the beluga whales. It must now only be kayaking or viewing from a boat, which is still a wonderful, wonderful experience. So uh, it's a opportunity to kayak with with these beautiful, beautiful, friendly. And whales very much like a dolphin. However, they are, they are whales. Uh, bird life is enormous up in the in the Churchill area. Well, wildflowers in the summer, uh, absolutely beautiful colour all throughout. Nice hiking programs uh, worth and needs to have a guide because bears are around. So uh, um, it is very very important that people take care of uh, themselves and making sure that they've got the right programs if they're going hiking. Historic sites are uh, available. There's a lot of uh, <coughs> research being done up in Churchill and people can go and visit the various areas there. And yes, it is possible to see polar bears in the in the summertime because they do uh, frequent around the Churchill area outside of the area itself actually, but more into the towards the tundra areas, but not that far away from town itself. They can be sighted. So just to to recap a few of the things here that we can do, um, explore, swim, uh, not swim with the whales, but kayaking with the belugas, um, visit shipwrecks, etc. on the coastline, which uh, back in the day is a lot of rugged experiences of uh, grounding of ships and so on. And uh, polar bears are also easily uh, viewable uh, during the, uh, the, the summer months and particularly walking with polar bears, some of the lodges, um, which would need a helicopter flight away from Churchill, have programs where they have walking with polar bears, and uh, which I have done myself. It's a wonderful experience, very, very experienced guys, so there's no danger there. Uh, and one thing to remember, while we're scared of polar bears, they're probably more frightened of the human being than uh, than the other way around. 
So just uh, another shot of uh, belugas there. Uh, they come up in their in their hundreds, and they're very, very, very friendly and curious. Polar bears uh, just lazing by the tundra area, some near a waterway, and on some munching uh, fodder there. Beautiful shot there of a, the striking contrast of uh, a polar bear with the beautiful um, florals in the background of the of the summer and uh, and the fall season. So the polar bear season, October to November, this is when the, most people go to visit them. They're outside of the, uh, some of it more into the, <clears throat> into the season, uh, 80% of the visits to Churchill in that six-week period. So it is very, bu very busy. Therefore, uh, hence uh, the need to book well in advance. It truly is a, um, a bucket list experience to go up there and see these huge, beautiful animals um, just wandering in, in the wild. And um, <clears throat> uh, Yukon, uh, sorry, uh, Yukon uh, is further north uh, from from here, and uh, that is where the different types of bears are. But the polar bears are, are located in uh, in Manitoba, in Churchill. So just uh, a lot of people get confused with that. So <clears throat> there's normally around to a thousand bears in that area. Um, there are there are, they are plentiful, and you usually get to see them uh, each day. Uh, if people are out on the and the tundra, the tundra is really like a, 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 a um, an Arctic type desert, which is quite uh, uh, a wilderness area. Um, <clears throat> so the 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 bears really gather there as as before that what they call the Hudson Bay freeze before they get ready to go up into the Arctic and hunt for their seals and what have you during the the, uh, the winter period and then they come back and uh, start it all over again a little later on. So some of the um, aspects of uh, polar bear viewing, um, the most popular thing are on, on these big tundra buggies as you see there on the, on the right hand of the screen, huge big uh, vehicles where have very, very large windows and a uh, viewing deck at the rear. And these vehicles travel out across the tundra. The, the drivers and guides are extremely experienced, so they uh, can spot a bear very, very easily. And bears are not easy to spot by uh, someone who's not um, experienced at it because of the, the colour of the snow and the, and the white uh, creaminess of the bear blend in very, very well. And uh, it's uh, normally only in the, um, in the tundra bushes and what have you that... Um, uh, the guides and drivers uh, spot them, uh, so if they're, of, if they're there, uh, they certainly do see them and uh, usually see one to two or maybe more in, in a day's viewing. And uh, you can pull up close by, they're very curious, they'll wander around and uh, <clears throat> they're more curious of what we're doing there than what, uh, what uh, uh, we are or what they are. And, uh, <laughs> and most people travel many, many thousands of miles just to experience it. So it's a nice interaction. Um, of the polar bears and um, and uh, <clears throat> the 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 uh, audience viewing them. Here's a, an example of walking with a polar bear. Um, <clears throat> it's um, walking from a lodge. You'll wander through an area, and uh, the guides there will be able to spot the bears, and uh, you stay in a safe distance. Uh, the guides have very very um, well, a, a good range of. Uh, um, materials that they can frighten the bears also if they get too curious but uh, they never are endangered um, but uh, we can get up close to them and you can see them uh, lying in the in the um, in the tundra area you can see them fossicking rolling around walking stretching whatever it may be and it's always a, a, a great experience just to uh, to wander around with the with the polar bears uh, something that's certainly definitely a bucket list uh, um, experience. So just some more shots of uh, polar bears in the in the wild. Um, very playful, very curious, um, very big. Um, so they're uh, they're something not to to go playing with, but certainly something to view and to really enjoy the uh, the aspects of them. <clears throat> the other parts of the um, seasons uh, of uh, Churchill, uh, the winter period, February through April again. It's not a long period of um, to see. Churchill is located right under the uh, Aurora Oval, as they call it, so it um, means that uh, northern lights are available 300 nights per year. 
not always visible in those 300 nights, but more so in that February, April uh, period uh, where the skies are, are, are more vibrant. And of course, um, aurora viewing has to be taken well away from the um, uh, the city lights, etc. So out on the tundra, it's perfect where there's uh, just natural um, nature lighting, let's call it. Um, Long nights and cold temperature in the winter means a highly uh, likelihood of clear skies, as I was saying a while ago. So that's when it's uh, best viewing of the uh, of the um, uh, aurora, the northern lights of um, of uh, church. Um, some of the uh, experiences you'll see, there's some viewing from the lodges, also some of the tundra buggies go and stay outside the... Uh, Overnight, there's one or two of them have uh, their own accommodations out there, so it can be very, very vibrant viewing in the in the in the right evenings. Um, I just like to go through the the top things to do in in Manitoba. <clears throat> so, I think a bucket list number one would be uh, to walk with the polar bears. Uh, the polar bears are known as the the kings of the Arctic uh, Kingdom. And these majestic uh, bears just um, uh, wander around in this beautiful, beautiful tundra, whether it be summer or in the uh, in the more winter months. And um, it's just a, a, an unmissable adventure in Manitoba up in Churchill to see that. Uh, also down back down in um, um, <coughs> Winnipeg, the capital of Manitoba, some wonderful experiences there. And one of the highlights is to, if we can crack the Hermetic Code, and the Hermetic Code is inside the Manitoba Legislature Building in the capital, uh, and um, it's, uh, it, it, there's a historian and author, Frank Alba, who conducts tours, and this goes back into the um, you know centuries when this uh, uh, the the Masonic uh, language was uh, around, and it dates even back through Solomon's Temple and the the Vinci Code, etc., etc., and there are so many uh, hints uh, of the way the building was structured in this area, and there's an actual code, and that really, uh, the guide takes you around, and if you can spot the codes, and it really brings it all to an end. Uh, it's quite a fascinating experience. In uh, um, I, I've, I've been on that tour, and it's an amazing experience. Um, uh, when uh, when you're viewing it with the guide who can explain the reasons for it. Uh, it doesn't sound great, but experiencing it is wonderful. We talk with kayaking uh, with the belugas. Uh, the belugas are um, uh, a fascinating thing, uh, uh, animal to experience, just to be there and, uh, and and to be with them and just see how they interact with, with humans. Uh, to witness the Northern Lights is a wonderful, wonderful experience um, uh, up in the, the Arctic region of... Uh, of Churchill, the Canadian Museum of Human Rights, one only one of its uh, kind in the world. It's the first museum in the world that's dedicated to the evolution and the, the celebration and the future of human rights. Uh, has over a quarter of a million visitors each year, uh, and um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. One can spend at least a day there. Just uh, um, uh, experiencing what the world has experienced over the over the decades, um, in the olden day prairie life of uh, of um, uh, Manitoba can be uh, can be experienced at Fort White uh, um, Alive, which is a which is a conservatory there. Which um, I think we had a, um, um, a vision before of uh, a bison and want to be wandering around the, the North American landscape in uh, just out of uh, uh, of Winnipeg. They uh, they um, wander around. There's, there's acres and acres and acres of uh, grounds there where they uh, they can just experience what it's like to be in, out in the wild. Um, to uh, dine under the um, uh, aurora under the uh, the northern lights um, uh, in in the, the main winter season there's a, a special uh, dining area restaurant set up in the old um, um, <clears throat> fort just at uh, at Churchill and it's uh, a glass dome roof and people just can go there and dine have wonderful wonderful chefs uh, called Dan's Diner 
and uh, it's the set up there for the season. And it, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. And also we've got the caribou um, migration of uh, of um, uh, these wonderful, wonderful caribou migrating, um, coming through uh, the outskirts of um, of um, Winnipeg and not far from town at all. So that's another wonderful experience to uh, uh, to uh, to go through. So Manitoba has some wonderful, wonderful experiences uh, right in the centre of uh, <clears throat> um, northern uh, North America. Halfway between uh, Vancouver and Toronto is where Winnipeg is located, and Winnipeg has the uh, the great access to um, all of the areas, uh, whether it be through the, the prairies, through the Great Lakes area, um, um, whether it be uh, driving out through uh, Lake Winnipeg or um, uh, whatever it may be. It's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. So hopefully we've been able to cover as much as I, I can in that uh, period of time. Um, only way to really, really understand Manitoba is to be there and experience it because it is... Um, not easy to talk about um, your experience with the polar bears or the beluga whales or the interaction with the uh, uh, with the, um, uh, the 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 bison and and all the other animals, the caribou and and and, and to see the uh, the polar bears in their uh, um, natural um, way of life, I guess you could call it, uh, down in, in Winnipeg uh, at the um, at the zoo conservatory there before you travel up to uh, to Churchill is quite an experience. So hopefully that's been uh, of uh, of interest to people this morning. And uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> Ray, thank you so much. Yeah, I think um, polar bears and belugas are on all our bucket list and northern lights as well. So uh, that was really really helpful. Um, so everybody, the floor is open for questions. If you do have any questions for Ray, please type them into the chat box. So Ray, I'm just going to kick off with, if you're doing a, a polar bear visit, how many nights generally do you spend in Churchill? Um, <clears throat> most people spend two nights um, in, in Churchill, um, mainly because it is such a long distance, so you can either travel by train, as we mentioned a while ago, on the Churchill train or, or, or take an air flight. Uh, and two nights, they can spend uh, some more time if they wish in the lodges. The lodges are more upmarket, hence a little bit more expensive. Um, uh, and that's where the experience of uh, walking with a, a polar bear can uh, can happen. So. I'd say two nights because uh, by the time you set up and get out and get organised, <clears throat> go out onto the tundra uh, to experience the bears, uh, maybe the second day may be better viewing than the first or whatever, uh, you may see more bears. So it's worth having at least, uh, at least two nights uh, so you can um, get more of an experience because it, you know, it is a bucket list. Yes, thank you. And you mentioned booking in advance. So how how far in advance do you recommend booking, especially I, if you're doing I, that I, I, season? Yeah, I, I think if if people can book twelve months in advance, great. If uh, you know six or eight months, also possible because Churchill is not a huge uh, area. It's um, a lot of hotels, motels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera there. Uh, however, um, getting uh, access then out into the tundra, there are several companies companies who have uh, vehicles out on the tundra. But because of uh, the environment, uh, we cannot take too many people out there at one time. So it's uh, uh, worthwhile booking well in advance. Great, thank you. Um, oh, another question: When is the caribou migration? Caribou, uh, they m migrate in the uh, in the, the the spring. They wander through um, at uh, various times. Of the, the most uh, the most time is uh, is uh, through in the spring when they when they're moving. Okay, question from Neville. 
So if people are going to rail one way, is it better to travel to Churchill or back to Winnipeg? So is there a preference it, for which way? No, it really, it really, it really does not. Uh, no, it's either way. It, it's ideal. It's uh, whatever whatever people wish to do. It, it, there's no right or wrong way. There's no more scenery from the left hand side going. <laughs> North and what they would be from the uh, right hand side going south, so to speak. So it's uh, um, you can, and it's August through September. By the way, is is the um, is the Caribou area, uh, but but by the uh, the train, uh, no either way, no problem. So uh, Caribou August through September. Yeah. Okay, and how long is that train from Winnipeg it's, to Churchill? It's a uh, it's a train is. Um, uh, and that one night, overnight on the train, a two-day train journey. Two-day train journey. Also. And then, so yeah, versus a couple of hours on the plane, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but it's a totally different experience. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. But yeah, like you say, to do one way um, on the train and the other way flying, that sounds like a good good combo. Yeah. Actually, did I say two days? Well, it's two days and two nights. I'm sorry, on the train, not not one night, two nights. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions out there? Uh, Irene says thanks, Ray. Jen says Ray, very informative. Karen, thanks, Ray. Maxine, great webinar, so informative. And Karina says, lots of valuable info. Thanks, Ray. Okay, I think we'll sign off there then. Thank you, everyone, for your comments and uh, questions. As I mentioned, it has been recorded, so you can watch this again. And, of course, we will have some follow-up information for you, so you do have opportunities to ask Ray questions um, afterwards if you need anything. But otherwise, thanks, everybody, for coming, and have a great day. Thank you, everyone.